It's been a hot minute since we've talked about trades here on this channel. Uh, we're waiting to see what teams are going to get what seed, and then we can really get into some playoff talk. I just dropped an episode of the Kenny Beach Podcast. Link will be in the description if you want to check it out. But today, we have another BR article, Blockbuster Trades. We're already thinking about. Y'all know this is my favorite part of sports in general. Seeing player movement left or right, and the NBA does it better than every single other sports league. Let's get into it. Shout out to the people over at BR. Shout out to Greg Schwartz. Are these trades good? Are they bad? Let's find out. DeJounte Murray traded to the Pelicans for Brandon Ingram. Whoa. So Brandon Ingram and Jordan Hawkins for, whoa, DeJounte Murray and Bogey Bogdanovich. Let, let, me, let, me, let me think on this for a second before I form an opinion. This is very, very interesting because when we talk about the Atlanta Hawks and they're potentially trading uh, DeJounte Murray or, or trading Trey Young, a lot of things that goes in my mind is like, okay, if you trade one of, one of the two, then you need to get a person back, a player back that can contribute right now. You're not trading a Jante Murray for three first-round picks. You're not trading Trey Young for just three first-round picks because if you're keeping one and not the other, you're still just going to be bad. It's either you trade both of them for young talent and picks or you trade one for players that can help now. And this trade is kind of that. So this would be Trey Young, Jordan Hawkins. Uh, who else would be starting at the two there? Uh... uh Jordan Hawkins, Brandon Ingram, Jalen Johnson, Clint Capella, slash Anyeka Kongu. And on the other side, it would be DeJounte Murray, CJ McCollum. The three would be Trey Murphy, the third, Zion, and Big Val, or a replacement center to be named later. I, I kind of like it for the... For the Pelicans, I think, and I think the only reason I'm saying that is because I am very, very high on Trey Murphy the third, and this gives him an opportunity to start full time. And they sometimes, I watch them, and though CJ has done a decent job transitioning to a full-time point guard slash creator, sometimes the dude look like they need a point guard. DeJounte Murray can be that. Also, they've been playing a lot of point Zion, which is very successful. I don't love this, but I understand the ideas behind it. I understand the ideas behind it, bro. I'm not mad at it. Now, this is contingent on the Pelicans flaming out in the playoffs because... The Brandon Ingram and Zion minutes are cool. They have a positive net rating, which is dope, but it's only by three. Um, Zion without Brandon Ingram is just one point different, and Brandon Ingram without Zion is better. And both of them off of the court is significantly better. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess we'll see uh, exactly how that goes. Having a creator um, for, for himself and for others in DeJounte can kind of remedy that. And while we're here, we could just look at the Atlanta Hawks duo as well. Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. When they're together, they have a negative net rating. So, yeah, we know they can't coexist. And DeJounte by himself is negative, but Trey Young by himself is positive. So you can think to yourself, okay, well, we just replaced DeJounte with Brandon Ingram. Now, you're also giving Bogey Bagnanovich up, who's one of the best six men in basketball. Maybe that's the reason why you say no to this if you're the Atlanta Hawks fans. But the idea of bringing in Brandon Ingram for DeJounte is probably interesting to a lot. I don't hate it. That's a decent start. Because at least that makes you think. Sometimes we see these trades and you're like, no, immediately. At least this makes you think a little bit. Trade number two is Mikael Bridges joining the Villanova party, the Knicks, Nets, and 41-year trade drought. And that is the immediate reason why I'm saying this trade doesn't go through is because these two teams do not make trades with each other. 41 years. I didn't know it was that long. 41 years. 1983. So it's Mikael Bridges going to New York for Julius Randle, a first-round pick from the Mavericks this year, which is not going to be a very good pick because the Mavericks are a good basketball team. A 2025 unprotected pick from the Knicks and a 2025 second and a 2027 second. If I am the Brooklyn Nets and I'm trading away Mikael Bridges, I'm not looking to get talent for the right now. Because Julius Randle goes to the to the Nets and then what? What are we doing? What, what are we doing if he's there? It's him and Nicholas Claxton, who's a free agent who might not be there next year. But it doesn't make sense to me. If I'm trading Mikael, I'm doing it for either a young player and draft capital or young player plus draft, whatever. This one, I like it a lot from the Knicks perspective, low key, um, because this is kind of real. The Villanova NBA thing is kind of real, but... I don't like it from the Brooklyn Nets perspective at all. Uh-oh. The Kings add more firepower with Zach Levine and Alice Caruso. Zach Levine and Caruso going out to the Kings. And then Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes, Davion Mitchell, Shasta Vazenkov, a 2028 first round pick top to protect it. A 2030 first round pick top to protect it. Hmm. Okay. So the idea is to have De'Aaron, Alice Caruso, Zach Levine, Keegan Murray, Demontis Sabonis? What does that mean for Malik Monk, who's a free agent this offseason? I don't really know. I would hope that if we're trading away Zach Levine and Alex Caruso, the picks that we get back won't be top 10 protected. 
I understand protections, don't get me wrong. Top five, maybe, but top 10 is a lot. I mean, I, I don't I don't love it. I don't love it. Maybe that's just my bias fandom. Y'all know when you're a fan of a player slash team, it's hard for you to trade trade those people. We always value them a lot higher because that's our guy, those are our guys. Ask Russo is my guy. Zach Levine is my guy. I don't love it. Um, before the season or earlier in the season before Zach went out with his injury, I kind of liked the idea of the Kings trading for Zach for it was like Kevin Herter. It was basically this exact package without Sasha Vizenkov and only one first round pick. I thought that was interesting. But this doesn't do anything for the Bulls other than say like, hey, in 2028, we got us a first round pick. Maybe it's protected. So maybe because Kevin Herter just had a down season. He's not coming to Chicago and changing anything. Same thing with Harrison Barnes. He's older. Davion Mitchell is like 30 years old as a young player. I don't, I don't love it. I don't love it. I think the Kings, from the Kings' perspective, is interesting. But you have De'Aaron Fox signed up. You got DeMont Sabonis signed up on the max. And now you have Zach Levine on the max. That's your big three. What's the ceiling of that big three? It's not a championship. So this is not, this is like a go all in type of trade if you're the Kings without getting the go all in talent. So I'm going to say no from both perspectives. Trey Young. Oh, so we, we had a trade of them getting rid of DeJounte. Now we got a trade of them getting rid of Trey Young. It's Trey Young to the Orlando Magic for Anthony Black, Jet Howard, John Isaac, and only two first-round picks. And one of them is from the Nuggets? So the 28th pick in 2025? Something like that? If this is the trade package for Trey Young, every team should be calling. Because, yeah, this is some good young talent, right? Anthony Black showed um, good flashes this year, especially when they were down. A lot of people were down with injuries, and he was in the starting lineup. I like some of that stuff. Jet Howard, we haven't seen a lot of. Jonathan Isaac is the best defensive player in the world, basically. So that's kind of cool, I guess. But if you're trading Trey Young and you're getting back two rookies, you're not thinking about getting a player that can help you right now in Jonathan Isaac unless you're trading him to another team. I don't love it, man. I don't love it. If this is the trade package for Trey Young, I would just keep Trey Young. Is Anthony Black ever going to be as good as Trey Young is right now? Is Jet Howard ever going to be as good as Trey, Trey Young is right now? Probably not, right? Probably not. So in that case, I would just sit on Trey Young being on this team, take the trade up here because, hell, at least we get something nice that we like. I don't like this trade at all. Oh, I just spoiled the last trade. But the fit of Trey Young in Orlando is interesting because the Orlando Magic have an infrastructure of a, a really good defensive team. They struggle on offense. And Trey Young is an offensive system in himself. The entirety of his career, his team has been, except for this year, I guess, has been significantly better with him on the court. We're talking about 13 points better offensively when he's on the court. Now, the defense, but that's why you go to the Orlando Magic. You got Jayla Suggs. You got, well, you gave away John Isaac in the trade, which you don't love. But you got Jayla Suggs, Paolo, Franz Wagner, uh, Wendell Carter. These are all plus defensive players to, to make sure that this is, helps out more than this hurts you know what i'm saying but basically the entirety of the trey young era and um atlanta trey young's team has been top 10 offensively even had the year where they were the, the second best offense in all of basketball um it hasn't necessarily equated to extreme success other than the conference finals appearance but him going to the orlando magic is very interesting i've actually seen orlando magic fans have conflicting viewpoints there where some of them are like yeah maybe it's worth a try some of them don't like the idea of him being such a ball dominant player but the offense or the orlando magic haven't been higher than wait well let me see let me see where it's at right now hold on because i remember before the season started there was a stat that said that the orlando magic hasn't had an offense that was top 20 or higher in like 20 years which doesn't make any sense to me Orlando Magic, they're sitting at 22nd currently. So that's still the case. I promise you, you bring in Trey Young, you're going to have a top 15 offense. Promise. So that streak would die. And honestly, if this is all I'm giving up for, let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Anthony Black again, a good, young, promising player. Jet Howard, I don't have an opinion on because I haven't seen him enough. And one first round pick for this year, which this year's first round pick for Orlando Magic is what? End of the teens, early 20s, because they're a playoff team, a real playoff team. And then 2025, Denver Nuggets, that's a pick in the 20s. Do the deal if you're Orlando. Don't do the deal if you're Atlanta. The last trade is somehow Donovan Mitchell has found himself on the Lakers. It is Donovan Mitchell for Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, Jalen Hushafino, one first round pick, two first round pick. But there is an asterisk here. What is that for? The Cavs either get the Lakers first round in 2024 or 2025, depending on the Pelicans. Right, so the Pelicans have the right to take the Lakers first round pick this year or next year. It's depending on if they make the playoffs or in the lottery, whatever, whatever. So they just saying that the Cavs would get the opposite of whatever pick. No, no. I mean, if you're the Lakers and this is all the cost, hell yeah, let's get it done. Even though I know a lot of y'all have grown attached to Austin Reeves or Rui Hachimura, who've been phenomenal for them, but Donovan Mitchell is a beast. And you're asking basically Donovan to be the third best player on the team? Kind of like that idea. Now, the surrounding pieces for the rest of the team is bad. 
I mean, you keep D'Angelo Russell in the straight, so that's fun. D'Angelo Russell and Donovan Mitchell as your backcourt should be interesting. I don't love this trade, though. I think a lot of the, the Laker trade packages that you're going to see with people throwing in Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, it's going to feel like they're underpaying, especially if they're getting a star back. But maybe those dudes just have real value across the association. Or is that Lakers bias? We'll never really know until a trade actually happens. So let me know what you think about these trades, man. It was some interesting ones. Made me, made me think. Made me think. And that's all I really ask. Leave a like, subscribe. Hit the link in the description. Go to the KBC Podcast. Subscribe to that, too. Playoff time, baby. Videos, episodes, these hats dropping soon. I, I'll spoil too much. Wait, 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 where's that? Where's that? Nope, it's over here. Come on, man. What does it say? What does it say? Enjoy basketball. Stop playing with us.